In this video, we're going to talk about the early perspectives of the field of psychology. The first one that you need to know about is called structuralism. This is the earliest perspective. The theory of structuralism is that all of consciousness uh, can be broken down into specific parts or structures uh, which can be studied. So if you think about it, it's kind of like anatomy where you think about specific structures. So if you imagine this thing being the mind, it would say that there's this part, there's that part, and then let's say there's a separation here. And it would say, here's one part, here's one part, here's one part, here's the other part. And if you understand all of those parts or structures, you would understand the entire mind. The technique it used to try to find these structures was called introspection. This is a term that you're going to want to know. It means asking, test subjects um, how they feel uh, or what their what their thoughts are. And the person who founded this was Wilhelm Wundt, who was a German guy. He built the first psychology uh, I, I'm not really good. Psychology lab uh, in 1879 at the University of Leipzig. Another person involved in this was E.B. Titchener. He was a, was a follower of Wundt and translated his books into English. So he's regarded as the person who, who brought stru structuralism to the United States. Another person you need to know about is G. Stanley Hall. So he's regarded as, well, he's not really regarded as anything in specific that I know of, but he built the first American psychology laboratory in the year 1883 at Johns Hopkins University, and he was the first president of the American Psychological Association, or the APA. So that's what you need to know about structuralism and the people involved in it. Next perspective that you need to know about is called functionalism. This perspective was based on the Darwin, Charles Darwin evolution theory. It focused on the functions of thoughts and emotions and how they helped the human sorry, human species survive. The person who founded this was called William James, uh, who was an American, and he is often re regarded as the, the father of American psychology. And he also wrote the first psychology textbook. So that's all you need to know about functionalism. The last perspective you need to know about is called psychoanalysis. This perspective focused on repressed 
childhood memories, uh, specifically repressed in the unconscious mind. It focused on unconscious conflicts and also on aggressive and sexual desires. If I, were to, if I were to use a few words to describe this perspective, it would really be like repressed memories and, you know, the unconscious mind and just weird theories about sexual stages. It was founded by a guy who you've probably heard of, Sigmund Freud. And he lived in Austria... He was an Austrian neurologist in the 1890s. Now the techniques he used, uh, at first he used hypnosis, but he found these other two techniques more helpful later on. So the one that you need to know about is called free association. This basically means um, to ask the patient or the test subject to say the first thing that comes to their mind. And another technique that he used was called dream analysis, where you just analyze the meaning of dreams. So he thought that there was a deeper meaning to dreams than the, the, the basic description that he got from his patients. Now, to be clear, none of these perspectives are really used today because they were really the first ones and it was kind of the start of the whole field of psychology. However, uh, there are there's a new version, I guess a modern version of psychoanalysis called psychodynamic, which you will learn about if you're going to take AP psychology and functionalism sort of morphed into evolutionary psychology. So that's all you need to know about the early perspective of psychology and thank you for watching.